Thanks for joining me. My name is Simon Hardy and I run an independent wine consultancy called Fitting Wines. I'm a qualified wine expert and hold the WSET diploma in wines and spirits. I'm actually Anglo-Swiss and launched Fitting Wines back in Switzerland in 2010. Now I'm based in London and in my role as brand ambassador for the Albion Group in the UK, I'm on a mission to share my knowledge, appreciation and love of Swiss wines. For many people, Switzerland evokes images of beautiful lakes and mountains, precision timepieces from watches to cuckoo clocks, hence the reliably punctual trains, and contented cows producing tasty cheese with and without holes, and chocolate in every conceivable shape and flavour. However, it's rare that anyone from outside the country spontaneously mentions its wines, even though the vineyards in some regions have been in production since Roman times. Switzerland is located at what you might call a sweet spot in the world of wine. The country lies at the crossroads of Europe, an idea visually represented even by the national flag. On all sides you find a major wine producing country. Italy and France are the top two producers globally, and Germany is in the top ten. When you include Austria and add together their collective share of the global wine market, you reach a massive 40% or four in every ten bottles of wine. So it's no exaggeration to say that Switzerland sits rather in the shadow of these much larger winemaking neighbours. While its location may hint at a wine growing heritage, its size provides no real clue as to the complexity and the diversity. In fact, Switzerland ranks at a distant number 132 in terms of its overall size as a country. 15,000 hectares or 37,000 acres of the country are covered by vineyards, similar in size to Alsace in France. With this surface area, Switzerland makes it into the global top 20. Then if you measure the size of the vineyards relative to the size of the country, the ratio is even more favourable and places Switzerland at number 10 in the world of wine. But the last statistic is probably the most impressive, if not the most surprising, as Switzerland consumes the fourth highest amount of wine per person globally. This remarkable level of consumption is one of the major reasons why so few people outside Switzerland are aware of its vibrant local wine industry. Annual consumption is in the region of 250 million litres per year, which equates to 31 litres of wine per head of population. However, the local Swiss wine industry produces an average of just 100 million litres per year. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that virtually all the wine produced in Switzerland is consumed in Switzerland. Currently, no more than 2% of production leaves the country. The simple reality of the maths explains why so little Swiss wine is found outside the country and why Switzerland is barely known internationally as a wine producer. It also means that wine imports from outside the country are necessary to satisfy the local demand. As a result of some difficult harvests in Switzerland in recent years, foreign wines have been increasing their share of the market. Let's start by answering a few basic questions, namely what defines Swiss wines and what makes them unique in the world of wine? The answer comes in three parts which cover the topography of the country, the climate or to be more precise the climates, and last but not least the grape varieties themselves, many of which are native to Switzerland. Switzerland is truly an alpine territory. 61% of the country is covered by the Alps. While these may represent just a fraction of the entire range that runs across Western Europe, well over half of the majestic 4,000 meter plus mountains are located in the Swiss Alps. This explains why so many of the great rivers of Europe trace their source to Switzerland before flowing to the four points of the compass. The springs of the Rhone, and the Rhine are in fact just 22 kilometers apart from each other. The Inn forms part of the Danube Basin and the Ticino on the south side of the Alps is part of the Po Basin. Then there are the lakes. Over 100 of them exceed 30 hectares in size. Importantly for the cultivation of vines, these lakes, rivers and their tributaries moderate the climate and together create 1,000 kilometers of often sloping shoreline within the country. 
but there is one other significant and unique feature of the Swiss Alpine landscape that needs highlighting, namely the glaciers. The current count is in the region of 1800 glaciers. Over thousands of years, the glaciers have retreated and continue to do so, laying down deposits that have been carried along as the ice melts. These so-called moraine are a mixture of rock, boulders and gravel within a matrix of fine powdery material and are a defining feature throughout the vineyards of Switzerland. Even though the country sits on a latitude that favours wine production, the altitude makes viticulture impossible in many places. The vineyards are located in the most favourable sites from about 200 metres above sea level to a little over 1100 metres, some of the highest in Europe. The second factor that defines the wines of Switzerland is the special climate. Firstly, let's remember that the country runs just 220 kilometres or 140 miles from north to south and 350 kilometres or 220 miles from east to west. Despite its relatively small size, the country's Alpine terroir actually creates a great diversity of climates, hence a variety of different growing conditions. The largely continental climate is moderated by the many lakes and rivers, as well as the warm fern wind, enabling grapes to ripen fully. Rainfall on the north side of the Alps can be as low as 575 millimetres per year, which requires irrigation with mountain water to compensate. South of the Alps is more like a Mediterranean climate with more than 2,100 sun hours, but over 1,800 millimetres of rainfall, often bringing heavy rain and harsh hailstorms. In the west of the country, rainfall averages just half that amount, while the north of the country receives more than 500 fewer hours of sun. The third factor that differentiates the wines of Switzerland is the remarkable number and range of grape varieties that are planted here. Admittedly, some are in minute production, but 21 varieties, both black and white, are unique to Switzerland, and there's a determined effort to continue and even increase their cultivation. These native grape varieties make an important contribution to the country's distinctive winescape. While there's a reasonable chance that you have heard of Chasselas, the most widely planted white grape, the others are less familiar to non-Swiss, such as Petite Arvine, with its fresh acidity and hallmark salty finish, Humaine Blanche, that delivers a powerful floral bouquet and makes rich, age-worthy wines, Amine, which is known equally for delicious dry, medium dry and sweet wines, and Completeur, which was close to extinction and even now occupies only three hectares, mainly in the east of the country. The black grapes include some truly ancient varieties such as Cornalin, which produces full-bodied age-worthy wines with silky tannins, Humain Rouge, which bears no relation to Humain Blanche, blending elegance with rusticity, as well as some promising new varieties such as Gamaret, Gara Noir, Diole Noir, and Divico, all contemporary crossings created in Switzerland in the past half century to suit the local growing conditions. Overall, there are more black varieties planted than white, which surprises even some Swiss. The single most prevalent grape is Pinot Noir, which accounts for just over one quarter of all plantings and can be found in almost every part of the country. It produces not only single varietal wines, but also a popular red blend, together with Gamay, the third most planted variety. Chasselas is by far the most planted white grape, and within Switzerland, this same variety is also known by regional names such as Fondant and Gouttedel. Merlot is the fourth most important variety, producing both red and notably some white wines mainly south of the Alps. These are the four principal grapes cultivated in Switzerland and represent 68% of total plantings. The vineyards of Switzerland are divided into six separate regions. 
and each one makes a distinct contribution to the Swiss winescape, supporting around 1,500 full-time wine producers in total. Four of the regions are defined by a single canton each. Valais is the largest with 33% of all vineyards, followed by Vaux with 26%, Geneva 10% and Ticino 7%. The multi-canton regions are known as German-speaking Switzerland at 19%, made up of 16 different cantons, and three lakes at 5%, which straddles four cantons. In wrapping up this introduction to the wines of Switzerland, let me highlight three main benefits of choosing Swiss wine. First of all, you get to experience the unique tastes of a range of ancient native grape varieties that are cultivated nowhere else on earth. You have the opportunity to explore remarkable expressions of the distinctive Alpine terroir, where sustainable or organic or biodynamic production are practiced almost universally. And you discover top rated wines that take you off the beaten track, produced by winemakers gaining a real reputation for consistent quality. And you can't get more Swiss than that. Exports of Swiss wine are rather limited, but the good news is that several leading producers are supplying their wines to a select number of UK distributors. The main four stockists of Swiss wines in the UK are shown here, and you can find a list of the regions and producers they carry by visiting the address shown. Whenever you need more information regarding Swiss wines or have specific questions or requirements, please contact me using the website email or telephone. Thank you for your time and attention and cheers for now.